Alrighty, welcome to the preliminary research and data sheet walkthrough portion of this e projects video. So yeah, so I want to just show you, um, we in the last video, we uh, fleshed out the initial ideas of our power supply project. So we have a you know, preliminary spec sheet and a block diagram so we kind of know what we're looking for. Now I want to show you how I went about selecting a flyback controller because that's really the first component that you select um, in a power supply because that data sheet has all of the other information that you need on it when it comes to designing the rest of your power supply. So um, there, if you go again to TI's website, you look at design resources, design tools and simulation, Webbench power designer. We'll just go try power designer now. So what you can do is you go your input type and you just set that. So 85 to 65 AC is what we want. It's what we put in our spec sheet. We want an isolated output because that is what the flyback topology is. It is isolated, meaning you have a separate grounds for the input and the output side, which just makes it safe and makes it safer in case of malfunctioning component. So we're gonna put five amps for our output. So then we're just gonna click view designs. In this case, we're picking balance because again, we're still learning how to design power supplies. So um, the one I ended up selecting, so I just ended up browsing through these. And I think the one I came, I ended up selecting was, it's like the U, CC28, I think it was this one right here. Um, and so I kind of just took a look at these. These are some rough uh, application schematics, right? And kind of, you know, if you heard what we, what I mentioned in the intro, where I'm looking to make progress on my design skills. So I wanted to find something that featured like a new, like something new. And that something new, quote unquote, ends up being a feedback control circuit, right? Because um, it's good to know, because this has a lot of complicated circuits that, and stuff that you need to know how to use. So um, I ended up picking one that had one of these in it because I wanted to learn how to design something with feedback circuit in it. So I ended up selecting UCC28C44. Like that, let me double check to make sure I did select that one. UCC28, oh, it's, yeah, I selected 28C42, so my bad. Um, that's for 4, 28C40, 28C42 is right there. So this is the actual one I, I ended up selecting. So, my bad about that. So yeah, so we have the data sheet, right? So I'll just pull this data sheet up right here. So I just downloaded it because much more, it's much cleaner to, to go through. So, like I said, um, this is a typical application circuit, so it should, this should look pretty familiar, especially if you watch my flyback converter videos and you watch the entire first five watt power supply video. This should look very familiar to you. With some new, has some new bells and whistles. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, they have some transistors over here. We we don't know what those do yet. With these capacitors and these resistors, it looks like some type of RC circuit. Um, but we still see our our main like hallmark components for you know a power a flyback converter right? we have our mosfet our transformer we have our actual switcher right here right controlling the gate or input capacitor right so this stuff all looks pretty standard um for a flyback controller right so what i then ended up doing was i just kind of browsed through the data sheet and we know the most important sections for this are going to be our typical application section. And a lot of times our typical application section of the data sheet will refer back to things maybe in the detailed description section or the specification section. So specifically our electrical characteristics and our typical characteristics section. You might want to be just browse, just just skim through them and just kind of maybe if, if you see a term mentioned in the application section, you want to, oh, like, oh, I know that's in the typical characteristic section, right? So we go here, we know there's a lot of graphs, a lot of tables, like this will definitely be referring to this table when it comes to designing our power supply, this one as well. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, this is, again, it's a very 
you know, pretty run of the mill in terms of flyback controllers. Um, I think here it says the switching frequency or the max switching frequency. Um, or maybe it doesn't show it specifically on here, but we can find that information that we need. And we'll talk about that more in the detailed design phase about what switching frequency we want to choose um, and stuff like that, and how that affects our design. So yeah, continuing on with our, our typical application. So here we see a little bit more detailed application circuit, right? So it has a lot more, um, you know, I guess it's a lot more detail is what I just said. So here we have this little sign is the optocoupler here. So and this is actually very complicated too, because this has a double, well, this one has a, uh, what is it? It's a double, like a center tapped transformer for its output. Um, so this is, it's different from what we're actually doing, but it's not a big deal because if you look back at the power designer thing, they use a regular transformer right here. So this is like, we'll be fine. Um, so yeah, going back to this and we'll just kind of scroll down. Here's a good example too. This is just a regular old schematic, right? So we have our optocoupler here. So what, what the optocoupler does is it passes information it sends a signal from the high side to the low side uh, we'll call it wirelessly right it's not actually connected electrically to the low side right because we want we want it to be isolated that's the whole point of the optocoupler is to keep our power supply isolated so it needs to send the signal wirelessly so that's what this does I'll make a separate video on optocouplers at some point in the future to explain exactly how they work but just know that they send a signal wirelessly um, so again, we have some other, you know, this is all the circuitry is related to the functionality of the optocoupler and sending that signal, the feedback signal, which gets input into the feedback section of our flyback controller. So again, we see what is pretty typical, right? Hopefully you should see some, some things that look familiar compared to that five watt one. And that's kind of the whole point of this, right? Is the more we do, the more things start looking familiar and then the more comfortable you get with designing things, right? We got our VDD pin, which powers our flyback controller. We have our output pin, which is what drives the gate of the MOSFET. We have our feedback pin, which takes in feedback data. Um, we get some other pins, RT and CT and comp, and we'll learn what those things do later on. Um, but so there's some, there's some new things to learn for sure, right? This one has a full eight pins. I think the 501 only had like six pins or something. So it was, it was a little bit simpler. Um, so yeah, um, there's definitely some new things to be learned on on this. So we'll just kind of go through detailed design procedures. So they're going to give you all the relevant information for how to design this thing. So you have like our input capacitor, uh, figuring out our primary secondary winding ratio, our um, rectifier diode, primary inductance of our transformer, MOSFET peak current, so helping us spec our MOSFET, right? So this should look pretty familiar when it, whenever uh, compared to designing the first flyback, right? So yeah, gate drive resistor, so I talked about that. I actually made a video talking about the gate drive circuit for flyback controllers. Go watch that video. Startup circuit, that's, I think we talked about that also in the five watt power supply. Poles, power stage poles and zeros, that's something brand new, so we'll get, we'll go into detail about that. Um, and it's actually extremely long, right? If you actually notice too, this one has a lot more, like if you look, we're, we're still not even close to done with getting through the typical application section. So there's a lot of, a lot more calculations that we have to do. They're not hard at all. Like it's simple algebra. All, this is always just gonna be simple algebra. So don't worry about any of that. Um, so yeah, just continuing on through this. So right, and then we're we're pretty much done um, when we get down here, right? So let's talk about open loop gain, another feedback concept. So all in all, it's uh, not that complicated. Actually, we have some more. You know, we're talking about the gain equation, we're talking about calculating some capacitor values. So in all, I would say there's definitely some new stuff we're going to learn with the circuit. Um, but at the end of the day, it's this is as complicated as a data sheet as you're going to get um, for a flyback controller, right? It's just you got to do do more more grunt work, so to speak. Um, so yeah, um, we can actually scroll down a little bit further and a little bit farther, and see they give us like a little feedback 
or not feedback, a little PCB layout, um, some examples that we can consider, right? So we'll we'll use this in our layout phase, and I'll kind of give a walkthrough on that stuff. Um, so yeah, that pretty much wraps up everything I want to cover on the data sheet section. So like I said, the main takeaways are just be familiar with what sections you want to know because when it comes to specking a data sheet, right? Because so this one we just picked it because because right we had no real reason to. But say your project requires certain, um, you know, characteristic or certain traits for a controller, you need to know how to quickly find those things, right? So understanding like where to get this quick features and you know description and stuff and get the information from that, and if you can't find it there know where in the table of contents that information is going to be. Is it going to be in our electrical characteristics, our you know typical characteristics section, or is it going to be in the typical application section? So um, like I said, another thing that's wonderful is the more data sheets you look at, the, the, the less and less frightening these will get. I remember when I first looked at data sheets, like I said, I was panicking and I was like, this thing's 49 sheets. Do I have to read three data, three full data sheets in order to figure out what what I want? And the answer is no. You just got to figure out how to pull the information you need. Um, and that's pretty much the name of the game right there. So yeah, um, thanks for watching this video. Uh, like I said, drop a like if it helped you out. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all the videos I'll be posting. I post videos regularly, like every couple days I'm posting a video. So subscribe if you want to keep up with those. Um, drop a comment if you have any questions or any ideas or anything you want me to do better or different um, any project ideas you have as well i'm i'd love to hear some of those um so yeah um that pretty much wrap this one up and i'll see you in the next video